How do we get earlier help? Enter the time zone. The wrong nine. Time zones. A really long song. Oh, the song's done. I'm I'm like messing with the cameras now. They like oh, so just <laughs> Anna, Anna coming in late messed up the camera setup here. So Anna could leave. Bye. That that's you know whatever. There's like two Annas that fixes right now. The cameras. That's <laughs> no two Annas. We don't want Anna to leave. Okay, I got I got it figured out. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, and uh, apparently, uh, so we have a special guest tonight here for microcasters. So normally it's just the three of us, but uh, we said that we wanted to do some studio series, and lo and behold, we, we have a uh, somebody that actually shows his face in here. Someone who actually likes movie figures. Yeah, I don't no know who person. that is. <laughs> Could you tell us about how that about happens? Like, like, does that come from some sort of like horrible childhood trauma? Is that how you end up liking child or childhood figures, <laughs> movie figures? Well, I was ten when the first movie came out, so that probably explains it. Or no, I think it's I was the childhood trauma that qualifies. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty much all I collect is just movie stuff. I know, I, mean, I know. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like those people that collect Un- Unicron trilogy. You know, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, I got I got a lot of Armada too. <laughs> a lot, kind of like those people who collect. Show we're having. So yeah, uh, there there was a, a guy in our local group. Like whenever we had a meetup, he came and and he started talking up Unicron trilogy, and like the rest of us are just like, "What are you? What are you talking about? Come on, man!" But but he was your age, Christian. So you know, that was his G one, just like how awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, welcome to Microcasters. Uh, tonight we are doing studio series uh, because I guess we, you know, eventually had to do a show featuring studio series because Earthrise isn't quite out yet or it's just sitting now. So and and apparently yeah, some people collect that it. crap. <laughs> not me. So. That's not true. You said you're getting back into it, you liar. I say I was. I don't have any yet. I don't have any yet. None of us do. Well, kind of. One of us does, I suppose. Well, if you count the we found them. Nights. We found them in our area today, so they're they're here. But I passed up on a set. I don't have the cash right now. Man, you, you got to. I'm a little uh, jealous. You have to prioritize that Earthrise, <laughs> or not the Earthrise, the Studio Series. Yeah. Well, I got to prioritize my vacation. I'm going on vacation next month, so I'm like. Ramening, ramening it up for the next month. Nothing but ten cent packs of ramen. I finally bought some ramen yesterday. I was so excited. I haven't had ramen in the house in ages. Fun stuff. It's fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, you end up with a taste you know, for it. You know, after it grabs a little more of an Easy Mac guy than a ramen oh, guy. Mm, Easy Mac is a good one. Mm. But see, now we have the same principle. <laughs> now, now they have like fancy ramen though, so it actually can cost some some good money. Yeah. Oh yeah! So I did the really whole great. cooking with ramen thing, like getting creative. <clears throat> Very popular. There, there you go. Grad school. So, so that's what we're talking about tonight: is how to <laughs> transform your ramen from <laughs> from, a from sad cheap meal. gross ramen <laughs> to fancy ramen. Yeah, there you go. A couple the keys to save a couple noodles for crunchiness on top of the finished product. Mm. Ooh, that is helpful. Good tips, Christian. <laughs> it's the so, only tip about ramen I know. So, studio series in general, like I feel like there was a big gap. Like, I- am I not wrong, or like, wasn't there like mm-hmm. essentially where it didn't come out for like months and months? Uh, well, it kind of depends. Last year we actually got quite a few. They just spread yeah. it out because I, I think feel it's because like we got those do... two deluxe waves right up front, and then it was yeah. a while. And yeah. it, well, they usually in between they'll do this. Well, last year at least they did the siege stuff in between, so they spaced them out pretty good. Because I think what they would do was we, I think studio series we had counted was pretty much every three months or so. Yeah, about every three months. Yeah. So 
in between the that they would do this yeah, yeah they do the siege so i think they would do like one month studio series another month siege and then the yeah, well yeah one month and they probably throw in Cyberverse in there too. Like I think that they do this intentionally so that people like me, where um, you know, I really just want to collect Siege, but then I will go like three months without buying something. So I'll start, you know, getting the shakes. And so I'll, like I'll, I'll go out there and have to buy like you're like all right, Cyberverse or Studio Series. Yeah. Which one do I get? Now, I Christian mean, and I were just showing you earlier the proper alternative is to buy weird knockoff multicolored Combiner Wars figures. It's true. That's what you should be doing. Yeah. Or you go for leftovers. I mean, I got, I don't collect these, but I get it for twenty five dollars on clearance. So I was like, well, twenty five bucks, cool. I hadn't bought anything in like a month or so, and uh, <clears> I had <throat> bought the Galaxy Prime, so I like the mold. So now I guess we'll see how this guy fares. That's okay. what I've been doing in between. Well, well, that way, when you're getting a Voyager-sized figure, you're only paying old Voyager prices, right? It's true. It, it is, yeah. It's tiny. I have the DNA kit uh, on pre-order, so hopefully that'll make it an actual well, that's perfect. Voyager size. So, I yeah, I guess uh, tonight's uh, is, is your show, you, you and Christian, because you guys are the... I, I have a couple that I bought, um... You know, I, I have got, one Studio Series figure. I, say, I got, I got, got one recent one that I got here, but other than that, I. I came with yeah. three other figures. You know, Shockwave oh. isn't even the best one in that pack. <laughs> no, no, it's parachute guy, parachute guy. <laughs> I think my cat already <laughs> took off with it. <clears throat> yeah. Studio Series parachute guy is the figure of the line. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost catching up. It's just. This last wave came in at a weird time because it was right after the holidays. So I was broke right after the holidays. And then January, I was recovering. And then I had to, like, do all my car registration and stuff. So I had to do adult things and, you know, pay my taxes. And then I got my vacation coming up next month. So it came at a weird time. So I'm still catching up. I need Shockwave and the two other Deluxes, uh, B and Hot Rod. But other than that, I'm only missing the two gold bumblebees and then that garage pack. That one that came with like the the like add on pieces to the bumblebee. But other than that, I have a pretty much complete line of studio series so far. So so I'm a little yeah. confused because I swear that um what was it the hot rod and the yellow bee, is that now or was that like is that coming up? No, that's this wave. So this deluxe wave was the 07 Bumblebee, uh, World okay. War II Hot Rod Sound Wave, and then the the RC tw- uh, triplets. Because like my target seems to be getting in like the last wave, the one with the uh, the green Bumblebee, the World War II one. Oh and... yeah, that's like three waves ago. That was. I, I don't know. Like that's they just got it in. Yeah, it was Our World area... War II B, uh, Sideswipe Barricade, and. Yeah. Yeah. We've been Somebody. we've been we've been getting swamped with the uh shatter wave. We still have a ton of shatters. There's those are like three waves ago, I think. Three or yeah, those are three waves I think. The three waves ago. World War Two Bumblebees four waves ago. Yeah. Cause but if you see a scrap metal, pick it up because he's going up in price. Make sure you don't snooze. Because he was he was available on Amazon for eight bucks and now he's like a forty dollar figure. That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, the Constructicons. I'm telling you, get the Constructicons now. Get the Constructicons. Christian theorizes that they'll that they'll release them again. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think that they'll be repacked into other waves. The only one who I think will be repacked would be this guy. Uh, we would assume that when Overload comes out, he'll be repacked with this guy. Who is but this guy? Hasbro, for our audio listeners. Scavenger. Oh, for the audio listeners. Uh, scavenger. I'm holding up the leader Scavenger. So it's we, we, we assume that Overload will come back with Scavenger because we don't, other than Overload, we don't know any of their leaders yet. Uh, who knows? We'll, maybe we'll hear more at Toy Fair, which is. So that doesn't. That red 30 that you were holding up, that doesn't really look like a good toy to me. Why is that a good toy? Well, the thing is, it's better than the original, but the original had it's such way a low bar. Than the, original. <laughs> the original yeah. already had like a low bar. 
that this is like you know oh my god his head can move that's already a plus you know it can right. barely he's move. actually he's pretty poseable for you know a yeah. unicycle guy what well what really makes me so bits here i guess attracted to the constructed cons is because revenge of the fallen really was the movie where the cgi models really reflected what the design style was and how they said the Decepticons are modeled to be like aliens. You know, these are alien robots from a, another planet mm-hmm. billions of light years away. They're supposed to look like aliens. And that's what I liked about them. They, you know, they did some un- uh, non-traditional robots. You know, we have this, you know, he's got the unicycle. Or I guess he's a bicycle, kind of. <laughs> but, you know, he's yeah, got the wheel. He's up and down in the movie. Uh, and then we have like High Tower, who's like that T Rex looking thing, and Overload, who I hope I doubt it, but I hope is the six legged version because there's actually two versions of Overload. Two. We never saw him transform in the movie, but there is uh, artwork of his CGI model, and there's two models. Uh, well, they were never CGI, but they're concept art. One of them he had like six legs and they looked like a spider, and then the other one was bipedal. We got the bipedal version in the Legends Devastator, which I have somewhere back here. But I'm really hoping for the six-legged one because that would be cool. Because they look like so cyber the, bugs. That's the like reddish thing with all the legs. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully it out. has all the legs. Yeah. Hopefully we want all that. That actually looks kind of cool. More. That looks like yeah. something that would come out of like a like a knockoff Gundam series. So I'm yeah. I'm attracted like to that. that. That's what I liked about it, like, because they took some risks with the design. You know, we're, we're yeah. used to the bipedal robots, two, you know, two legs, two arms, and then we get, you know, yeah, like Mix Master, dude's beefy and wide. Beefy and, and the long arm thing, I mean, that's that's weird. Especially you have Rampage, who literally jumps up and down like a pogo stick. Yep. And it's, the constructed cons are mostly non-traditional robots, and that's a really cool right. aesthetic to go for. Yeah, are they yeah. made of... Like you said. Are, are they made of Transformium? Technically, I yes. guess. I think technically everyone is. Yeah, so it, it's it's cool. I like the designs. That's that's what I, I'm really excited about it. And I mean, the fact that we're finally getting like a big devastator who transforms into individual robots and then combines. That's the best part. Dude, it's before be this, so sick. I know it's going to be huge. <laughs> I put together these guys, and it's going to be big. It's huge. So, do you have the original Devastator that they released with Revenge of the Fallen? Mm-mm. I want to, though. But I'm hoping right after this guy comes out that the original goes down in price. It's still around 100 bucks, which isn't awful, but it's not a good toy. So, I don't really want to spend 100 bucks on a toy that's eh. So, I'm hoping that once all of this guy comes out, he'll kind of go down in price. But as a movie collector, I've noticed that Studio Series hasn't really affected... Um, prices of originals a lot. Some figures have gone down a little bit, like uh, the original Constructicons at one point. Uh, Mixmaster, if you had one sealed, was over 100 bucks. Now he's kind of settled around the 80 to 90 range, and then Loose, he's like 50 to 60. Uh, but even Loose was like 80 to 70 at one point. And then the Studio Series came out, and the originals went down, but they're still desirable because there's a lot of people like my age who now have graduated college we have full-time jobs and now we can go back and buy the figures i couldn't when i was 13 so it's the only reason why and then plus the the revenge of the fallen line was a fantastic line so that also helps retain value just because the toys are a lot of fun well it's not bad so when it comes to we're we're typically constrained to more traditional robot designs on the show right like we typically talk about legends and we talk about um, the Siege figures, now we're going to talk about Earthrise soon, some Masterpiece figures. So we're typically constrained to the traditional humanoids. When it comes to these less traditional figures, like, do you care about the articulation? Like, does that even matter? Because, I mean, like, the, the couple that you've shown so far, they have some weird articulation, right? Like, their arms don't move in the right place, if you can call them arms, and things like that. The one doesn't have legs. Mm-hmm. Well, Christian and I have talked about this before, where we can forgive, we're forgiving if it's in the design. Like, you know, this is his design. All he can do is move his arms and roll around. That's it. But 
we're not going to, you know, complain that he has really little articulation when that's just the way that he was designed in the movie. The same thing with uh, Hightower. You know, he, he looks like an ugly robot, but... It's just Very limited things. articulation. But, yeah. it, like Serge said, the design doesn't permit lots of articulation for it. Yeah. And... If we're, I'm, so I'm no? personally, yeah, I'm personally more forgiving just because, you know, once I get all of these, they're just going to be in Devastator. I'm not going to take them apart. You know, it's... The whole reason again, I'm buying these is, is to put them together. So, are you... As long as Devastator has appropriate articulation, that'll be fine, too. So, just out of curiosity, uh, I think, isn't there, like, a third-party, uh, like, Devastator coming out, too? Or, like, yeah, I don't know if it's I, actually coming out, but it, it got announced by somebody... It started the, coming out already, right? Mixed oh, Master's okay. out. He's out, but the whole snafu in China has kind of delayed a lot. He mm-hmm. kind of came out. He trickled out at the end of December, early January. Uh, the the place that I order my stuff from, Z, they didn't charge me until the week before uh, Chinese New Year. So they didn't even... They got it in, I believe, the week of Chinese New Year. So I, I don't think I'll be getting mine until, like, March maybe uh but it was pretty quick because they announced it sometime last summer early last summer and then we already got the they they pretty much showed i think they showed six five or six of the limbs so far and we got immediately colored prototypes of mix master and he's already out six months later so they're moving pretty quickly uh Very reviews say that they're pretty yeah, mo- uh, reviews say that they're pretty decent quality for a brand new company, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, and, yeah, and they're well, not re- unreasonably priced too. I mean, Mixmaster is like a hundred bucks, which not too bad. A hundred bucks, hundred bucks a limb. I mean, it's going to be once we get them all, it's going to be like eight hundred because there's eight of them. But um, well, I think a hundred bucks a limb is about standard for third party combiners. That that was what my my question was is like that. Is this going to essentially, like the, the Studio Series one, is that enough for you, or do you need a higher quality Devastator? And it sounds like you're doing both. Yeah. I'm doing, well, I'm, I, I have doubles of all the Studio Series, so <laughs> I have a plan to have like a little Devastator display. Um, I, what I was going to do is I was going to take the original Range of the Fallen toys and use those as vehicle mode, and then use my doubles as uh, robot, and then have the the third party devastator and then the studio series devastator combined together like you know next to each other so i might have a nice little oh and then the legends i'm gonna throw the legends in there too and then hopefully if i get the original supreme one i'll throw that in there too so it's gonna be a pretty hefty hefty display once i get them all together and say it sounds like yeah. it's gonna be a pretty substantial display there yeah i got well, some plans well, well Serge is getting duplicates i'm really hoping for a repaint set mm-hmm you know, through Studio Series Select, which needs to be a thing, or yeah, however it needs to happen. Um, there's lots of repaint potential in these guys, particularly from the original lines, you know, Long Haul and the Payload, uh, Rampage and the Skipjack, which we've seen listings for, a Scavenger and a Demolisher. I would really like to have a combined Devastator in the movie colors and then robot modes because they're so cool as uh, repaints. Well, yeah, um, every Studio Series figure has had a repaint, right? No, not even half. Really? Oh, I thought, even, no. I thought not, a lot of them even, did. I don't even think an eight. Most of them don't. Really? We have... I swear, the, the it, it may... There's three KSI bots. Right. Uh, there's the three KSI bots. Uh, Ratchet. Ratchet. Uh, Clunker Bumblebee. Clunker B, yep. And then there's the exclusive uh, VWB, which has the dirt on it. And that one came in the two pack. Crankcase and crowbar. Like... Crankcase and the crowbar, the exclusive Megatron. The World War II B one. and Hot Rod. I don't know. He has a new head, so I count that as a retool. I <laughs> wouldn't count that as a repaint. Uh, tattoo. Tattoo Starscream. Tattoo Starscream. Uh, Dark of the Moon Optimus. So that's 10. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's 10. And out of 50. Then what are we on now? 55? The... And then the two, the two gold bumblebees. So twelve, I think that's it. This is number forty nine. So see, yeah. See, I, I guess I just I don't know. Some a lot of the molds I guess I've gotten, and you know I've kind of gotten some of the main characters to where they've been in multiple movies, and so that's where I you know maybe I've just thought about it from from that uh, standpoint. But uh, 
Yeah, Serge and I have talked about this for months and months and months now, but we're actually rather shocked that there aren't more repaints. I mean, that's not Hasbro's M.O. Well, let's just go so to have, show how, how these how, it's just, the, the line must be doing great, though. I mean, if, if they're selling enough of these true. things to not have to do repaints, then that's that's a good sign. That means that they're selling enough of these to keep making these brand new molds. Uh, I feel like that's I mean, the concession, though, with Studio Series, is like a lot of these molds are so unique and weird that they just don't really lend themselves to repaints. Like they're yeah. they're very individual things. And the the whole the whole point of the line is to be bring the screen characters into right. life. That's but true. There's been a couple that have been debatable that were on screen. You know, like uh, I just thought of Thundercracker, the last Thunder Toys R Us. The last mm-hmm. Toys R Us exclusive. That one was not in the movie. <laughs> he's he's great he's, figure though. I love him. Just yeah, he's nowhere that movie. Not in the movie. And then the KSI bots are uh, mm. It's a cool it's debatable. a cool figure though. Um so Christian, Nick loves your idea about Studio Series Selects and, and all of the repaints. So just to yeah. just oh, yeah. you know. And the the main idea about that and Serge and I talk about this too. We we talk like every day. <laughs> by the way. No one knows yeah. that. We're like best friends. Anyway. Yeah. So no exaggeration. People, like on my way home from work, I'll call him and we'll, cause I have an hour to commute home. So that's how I pass the time. We just like, yeah, yeah we just talk about BS about toys. For an hour. Yeah. <laughs> so for, for collectors who are my age and Sergio's age, some of those repaints were just as important to us as, you know, the on-screen characters. For me, I'm thinking you know, movie 07, Stealth Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper. I mean, those figures were awesome. They're still some of my favorites today. You had stuff like Jungle Bone Crusher, Recon Barricade, and then late, and even later movies you had like Grindor or Evac from Blackout, Deep Desert Brawl. Like all of those are still you know iconic yeah. and classic to me, and I would love the, to have new versions of them. Yeah, the original lines had a ton of those wacky repaints, you know, because it's like you know when the movie came out. Other than the screen use characters, how could you repaint them? So they had to make these weird, wacky repaints, like Recon Barricade, uh, the G1s, uh, Evac. Rescue Ratchet, yeah, yeah. Evac, Swerve. Uh, Night Ops Ratchet was also pretty cool, too. Oh, Night Ops Ratchet, uh, that's awesome. So there's a lot. So, I don't know. I think what I'm thinking is that if we do get the Yellow Long Haul, which is Payload, and we have a listing for Skipjack, but I think... Yellow I think I think Skipjack is going to be a regular retail release, but he'll be kind of like a test. And I think if it's well received, then they'll do a payload as an exclusive. They'll do a demolisher as an exclusive. There's been rumors. The Studio Series rumors have actually been pretty solid. Um, mm-hmm. Like, you did get that demolisher I rumor. Say, I want to say 80% of the rumors we see usually come into fruition. And uh, one of the rumors, one of the recent leaks who confirmed. I think he confirmed the next wave of uh, deluxes, which was Roadbuster, uh, and I forget who else. Oh, the the Jeep Bumblebee and mm-hmm. Jet Shatter. It was it was all in that leak. It was a leaked list, and in that list, it said that depending on how Yellow Long Haul and Yellow Rampage do, they'll do a Demolisher, which is a white scavenger. Yes. In the movie. In the movie, the only time you see him in this robot mode was he was white. That was the beginning of the movie. That was actually a different character than the Constructicon. Demolisher is a completely different character. Same CGI model, but he and he's white, but it's a it's not part of the Constructicon combining team. The Constructicon in the movie were very weird because it, it, it's even the Wiki doesn't know, and even the Hasbro doesn't know because I think at the yeah, Botcon they at the Botcon they said Devastator can be between six and eight, up to nine robots can form Devastator. So it's it's weird. So uh, but, so the Devastator combiner that's coming out for Selects or, or for Studio Series, sorry. Um, it, does that like does it have all the combiner parts? Like, are they integrated with the figure, or how how does that work exactly? Yeah, they're all. Um, the only one who I think is going to have a part is uh, Overload, uh, because in the prototype we saw that really weird jumbly mess prototype that I think was at. Was it London Comic Con, France, Paris Comic Con? Some some Spain. con in the it's summer. Spain, I thought it was. Yeah, it was like end of summer, early fall. It was a really off, awful, awful, awful prototype of all the Devastator pieces put together, awfully mistransformed. Um, but we saw 
blue plastic prototypes of overload, which is the waist, and then uh, scrapper, which is the other arm. Uh, and I also saw on Devastator's neck, there is a blue piece. So I'm assuming that leader overload is going to come with a piece that slips over uh, Mixmaster. And Mixmaster, when you put him into head mode, I have him in robot mode, but in head mode, there's um, for the video, for the audio listeners, I'm looking at the bottom part of the barrel. Uh, there's these like slots that I'm assuming is where that neck piece is going to slide over because there's no use for them otherwise in robot or vehicle mode. So I think, but other than that, I mean, the head is inside the cab. Uh, and just the way that the, the, just the way that Devastator is designed, he doesn't have like, you know, his hands and feet are made of the vehicles. So it's unlike traditional G1 combiners where they have the like black feet, black hands, you know, where it actually looks like a block or traditional hands. Okay. Yeah, so that you answers your question. <laughs> yeah. So that answers your question the long way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So are, are there any of the constructor cons like, you know, cause I'm not in for the whole set. But it, are there any individual ones? Like, it seems like that Mix Master is kind of cool. Like, I, I kind of like the face and just that whole that whole thing. Because can't you display it in vehicle mode with with the face too? Or am I? If you wanted to, <laughs> there's nothing stopping you. I mean, yeah. you definitely could. <laughs> yeah, you can. I mean, you'll just have a floating head. But if you really wanted to, I think if you could only get one. It's a tough call, but I think Anna made the right call. I think Scrapper, if you're more of a traditional bipedal transformer, G- this is the most G1-ish out of all of them. Uh. So for a person like you, you'd enjoy this one the most. It's it's blocky. The, the, it's a great articulation. He has the best articulation of all of them. Um, the transformation is a lot of fun. And just overall, he's just. I think he's just the best one overall. Um unfortunately that's just because again the nature of the other guys' designs it's kind of unfair to compare them but for someone right. who collects the stuff that you do this is my recommendation it's scrap is a new design i mean that's it's a new design for studio series they had to make the hand work yes. somehow and they chose to turn it into a robot mm-hmm. that looks like that yes we never got him in any other form uh we never saw they never had concept art of it we never saw him in the movie uh, the Legends figure, they didn't include him either. The Supreme one, I think, included... It's, it's Hightower and Scrapper that are the arms. It is it. Hightower. Yeah. So this is the first time, yep. So, Anna, what made you decide to pick that guy up? I bought a large lot of figures from someone, and it was in it. And my my thought, honestly, was that I would either I would either get it, and I think it was cool and commit to the whole set or I would just sell it to somebody. And I actually ended up exactly like Sergio was just saying, I ended up getting it and thinking, hey, this is pretty cool. It's a standalone figure. This is perfectly fine. So it just lives with my very small um, set of movie figures. Because I only really, I only really like the more traditional looking movie figures, really. So I have kind of a boring, normal looking movie yeah. collection. Um, and and you, you could tell that he was designed with the recent aesthetics in mind because yeah. they could they could stick him in like, you know, one of the the Bumblebee movie and he'd fit right in. He, he's, Definitely. He, he looks a lot like the newer, uh, the Nightverse designs. He's a lot more G1-ish, just a silhouette. I mean, you know, other than the other than the fact that he has no like hands, <laughs> he has like the scoops. Uh, he, he looks he looks like your traditional Transformer. Yeah, but I'll say that, like, to me, even the level of articulation in this one, which is appropriate for the figure that he is and for the kind of, you know, he's almost traditional humanoid, but then, like, you know, his legs are actually somewhat reverse jointed and those sorts of things. Even those limits on the articulation do bug me. If this wasn't something that was in a lot that honestly felt free because it was a really good deal, um, I might be disappointed with the articulation. Now, the articulation in the arms is almost good, so I like that, but he really needs some wrist swivel. See, I'm just so picky. How is it almost good? It's got like a billion joints. 
I yeah. can't. No, no, those other guys you were holding up, Christian, I can't own those. There's no way. Wait, I'm talking like about if, scrap metal. He's got like a yeah, billion joints. Yeah, but I'm saying it. if this isn't enough for me, I can't own those guys. <laughs> they drive me crazy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, well, this guy yeah, scavenger like, you'd have a problem with. Mixed master. <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's like scavenger, you can do this or you can do this. That's about it. <laughs> He's got a couple other joints, but... No, literally, the other day, like, as we were... When we decided to do a show, I was, like... I was thinking I might go ahead, and because Hightower is, like, super cheap um, in various places right now, I thought I might just grab them, because it was, like, I'll just go ahead, I'll cool. grab them, and I'll go ahead and commit to this idea do it of now. trying to get all the parts of Devastator on the cheap. And do it now. I just, like, I thought about it for a while, and I was like, I'm just going to hate these guys as individuals. It's, and I probably it's would. A, for the viewers who are on the fence, do it now. Because I have a hunch that Hightower is going to be the same story as Scrap Metal. Scrap Metal was $8 on Amazon for months. He was clogging up shelves at Walmart for months. Now he's a $30 to $40 figure. Hightower is 10 bucks on Amazon. Go grab it. Because it's, yeah, you, it's not you're not next time. time. Uh-oh. Because, I, I mean, I'm really curious because I feel like I, I don't know. It seems weird to me that Hasbro would release a, a combiner over like how, what is it like two years essentially, and at the end of the two years, you're not going to be able to pick up like you know the first figures. Like, what about the person the, that never this that didn't get in till late? Yeah, this We've been is debating very, about this for a, a little bit. Yeah. Because I'm thinking that a lot of the constructor cons will get repacked towards the end of the year. Because we're expecting overload to come in the August September leader wave. If Scavenger gets repacked there, that would make sense. I'm, I'm thinking that Hasbro, like you said, would want to have all of them on shelves at the same time, so parents can go in and buy their kid Devastator for Christmas. Granted, it's a $260 combiner, so maybe that's not the Christmas present yeah, this year. It's I don't know. Studio That's part of why I'm hoping for some repaints too, though, because if you don't have the components, you can have all of this, all of yeah. all of a yeah. You know what I'm saying? And Studio Series really is—it's a collector line. I mean, it's still simple enough for kids to pick up and mess around with, but I mean, we we just talked about this earlier. Was just just the sheer amount of new molds. Uh, there's only been a handful of figures that have been repacked. Only a handful. Usually in past. Past uh, past movie waves or, or past movie lines and even past classics lines, they'll repack a figure every now and then. Maybe every wave, mm -hmm. every other wave, usually has a repack, one repack. Movies, especially movies, would love to pump out Bumblebees, Optimuses, Megatrons. Those three were the big three to get repacked a lot. And yep. Studio Series, it's like every wave is a brand new, brand new. It's a brand new wave. So yep, you and, have to get it then. I mean, it's, it's very rare that they go on clearance like we're seeing with Hightower. I mean, if you don't yeah. get it when it comes out, that's it for you. I think that the, the constructor cons are definitely the most desired in the line um, already. I mean, I picked up when I was picking up my duplicates, I made sure to get them at the same time because uh, long haul, again, is a 50 to $60 figure. Now uh, Mixmaster's creeping up there. Mixmaster got restocked on uh amazon for 26 bucks so get them now yeah and uh so, nick in the chat is saying that he you know doesn't doesn't really like the live action movies but uh but buys all the toys and he said that he's yet to be disappointed by any of the studio series constructor con figures so good on you nick it's good I, it takes a lot for you to say that i ah. understand I have a question that this is just like a weird question, but because when I go into the store and I try to touch the studio series box, my hand burns. I've never looked, but <laughs> these devastator figures, are they actually labeled as being devastator parts on the packages? Or is this one of yes. those, like everybody knows it's a combiner, but it's not do labeled you, as a combiner type deal. Do deals? you have a box surge? Uh, no, my boxes are up in storage, but I just like the mine. Combiner Wars boxes, remember how Combiner Wars on the sides, they had the picture of the Combiner? So Devastator, it has a big picture of Devastator okay. on the side of the box. Okay. That's and they fair. do have combination I'm just curious, because I thought... Booklets. And I thought again, emphasizing that it's a, it's a collect... I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just... Before we oh, no, on, I, I was just thinking if it was like Combiner on the down low, then they uh, wouldn't... Well, that's what the, one thing they I They wouldn't have to release them. 
it kind of is because that's the only indication that it's part of the set was the side picture. On See, the back right. of the okay. box, there is no, you know, Combiner Wars would show, hey, this is the right arm. But, but um, the instructions um, do have. The instructions, the instructions show, do yeah. have, yeah. Okay. But, that makes again, me think that they'll probably make a way for you to get them when they're all out. That is what my thought is. I think all the molds will be available within probably six months of them being done. I think a box, a box set would be more believable if it wasn't eight. Uh, if it yeah. wasn't eight guys, a box set would be a lot more believable, especially with two liters. Oh, this yeah. would be either like a two hundred fifty dollar box set or some sort of like premium four hundred dollar box set if they did some sort of like premium finish version. If they do it, yeah, it'd probably be a pulse thing. If they do, yeah. that would be a select. <laughs> so Honestly, just if they, did, if they did the the premium paint finish as selects and just release them, you know, every month or so, like we get selects when selects is going, then uh, that might be okay. But if they're like turtler markups. Like, if they're as much as the Seacons are. Mm, I don't think... Seacons are weird, be. though. Because are those weird are direct, they're entirely new figures. And they're direct yeah, imports from true. Takara Tommy Mall. Mm. Uh, so, oh, I That's what I was thinking. It would be so much money if they did a premium box set. So, so just out of curiosity, have you guys been mad that the triple changers in the movies have not been triple changing toys? I am. A little. Like Shatter and Dropkick, I guess, like from the Bumblebee oh. movie. It's a $20 toy. I can't. Yeah. You, you can only be so them. mad at that. Like, y am I disappointed that it's not? Sure. But, like, I, it, it's an unreasonable expectation to make something that small do that yeah. kind of. To, to make to make a truly movie accurate in, in three modes, I mean, that's that's a tall order. For something of that size class, and that's one of the gimmicks. Is the line is that they want screen accuracy for, you know, a retail line, which they're doing a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, maybe Devastator can be a Botcon 2021 set. <laughs> well, I don't even want to get into that. Like a green <clears throat> line. They'll mm. make something up. They'll say that uh, back that was going to be the the Botcon 2018 set. <laughs> if it happened. <laughs> So happy to That's what we would have done. This was from the comments, Christian. So just just let you know. Oh, was it? Okay, I thought it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. It wasn't. It wasn't coming from me. This is Rand Randall uh, was throwing that one out there. So I'm sure we'll have a, a full TFLP where we talk about that. I, no, no, I don't know if we will. Honestly, not really sure. I want to get that go there. We got you know a year and a half to talk about it probably so yeah, yeah. at some yeah. point I'm sure it'll come up. I so, think uh, when we get closer to a certain event that happens in Kansas City, we can have a show about conventions. Yeah, we can we can talk Maybe. about that. I just I just don't want to get into you know whatever stuff, but not in the show. <laughs> Talking about conventions overall would be fun though. If yeah, no, absolutely. I go to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time since we've done a convention video. The last time I think, did we? Did you guys do a cast at DC? Or did you yeah. do a yes. post DC? We did. Oh, you did one at DC. Yeah. yeah. We did a chill yeah. show. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's we been did a while like since a. We've done like a retrospective, like you know. Yeah. Oh. I sat weirdly on the bed. My legs didn't <laughs> work for like twenty minutes. It was terrible. I had to be helped out of the room. I forgot about that. You guys left me. You guys left me. It was someone I didn't know. We had to go hunt for the last half hour of the show. <laughs> yeah, um, guess what? When I got there, you were still hunting. So, yeah. um, so mo moving on as far as studio series, um, back to non Devastator. Have there have there been any recent figures that you guys have gotten that you've really been impressed by that are not Devastator Studio Series? Um, well, the thing is, like Devastator has been such a exciting point for me for the line that like the other whenever they reveal something else, I'm like, cool. And where's the Devastator parts? I want to see that exactly. Um, but I, I don't think have that's a pretty yet. complete show, Lucas. Just Devastator. <laughs> Well, I, I just wanted to mention too that I I also got since uh, I spent whatever fifty bucks on Shockwave that he's a yeah. pretty neat figure. So I really like I the wash on yet, him. 
I've done it in person. I've, I've messed with them in person. Uh, Paul had one at the last Chicago meetup we did, and man, that thing is awesome. It's fantastic, and I mean, it's it's like the cherry on top is parachute guy. Like that's just like you know, parachute guy. It's, it's yeah. just the, the ooh. The, the touch of the, the touch of resistance, and it's also just, because of know, brains and wheelie, and I've wanted those yeah, guys for which, a really long which, time. Which which presented another argument that me and Christian has spent countless hours bickering back and forth about where the hell is Frenzy? Where is Frenzy? O seven Megatron was the last hope that we had for Frenzy to come out, and they he could just be you know like this. This is, uh, this is Laserbeak, the minifigure that comes with Soundwave. You know the mini Dinobots came with Drift last year. We saw yeah, Charlie not, that came yeah, with the garage for, set. Like, you know, a posable, movable figure. A little yeah, rubber figure. Thing. Like little the, tiny, like little tiny baby. Yeah, just, I want it. <laughs> so that's Shockwave that Lucas is hurting his arm holding up for so long. That thing actually looks like it's still pretty big. Are leaders in Studio Series still really large? Depends on... Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it varies based on like what character it is. It varies on the character and the budget of the wave. Like, say, here we go. Uh, you get a, yeah, this last we, wave was a pretty high budget. I mean, this dude, his he lacks paint, but he's beefy and huge. Shockwave is a little bit on the shorter side, but he has a ton of paint. So, yeah, yeah it's like balanced. No, I was just thinking because, you know, Lucas did hold up the, the Siege Shockwave, and that's a problem we've had in Siege, is that leaders have gotten smaller, and people have gotten yeah. whiny about it. And, and I was just curious if also the Studio Series figures get smaller, because it's the same company yeah. making and them. Then, I mean, it depends you get, like, on dudes like Megatron, the Revenge of the Fallen Megatron is huge for a Voyager. I mean, it's, oh, it's, it's, a Voyager. Than, it's I'm pretty sure it's bigger than Sea Shockwave, which, I mean, Sea Shockwave is tiny, but this is huge for a Voyager. Yeah, that Revenge of the Fallen uh, Megatron has been one I've kind of debated about, too, because he's so shiny and, and looks really nice. But then I already have, like, I think I bought two or three Studio Series Megatrons already. So I'm like, do I really need, like, another one? Um, but uh, this Shockwave looks really, really neat. Like, the paint wash on this is kind of similar to uh, the Grimlock uh, that they did mm -hmm. in the studio series, except for it's purple, but it's like the, the parts are purple and like the little, I don't know, whatever skeleton chest parts are per like, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but uh, it's a, uh, it's a really, really neat looking figure. So it was kind of the ones again, like I've been super picky about what I picked up from studio series. And this is, one of the few ones where I was like, okay, I'm getting this one because this, this actually looks pretty neat. Yeah. I do this, admit at least still want that. Solid. I do still want yeah. that hoodie Megatron from movie three. He's like every, 30 bucks on Amazon now. I know. Yeah. Every time I see him for cheap, I think I should get him, but I just get don't him. collect movie figures. But He's very good. Yeah, but You're Anna, like, you of all people who don't like collect lines, it's like you just collect what you want. Just get that figure. I know yeah. what I love that you, you won't be it's so weird. And that yeah, whole he comes with Igor. Weird. I, I'm still mad that we got Igor before we get Frenzy. We might even get Frenzy, and Igor wasn't it for like two seconds. But remember, Whatever. what was my theory cool. about getting Frenzy? Never. We have a we have a theory that there's going to be some sort of gift pack. Uh, that'll come with Sam, Michaela, and Frenzy. I think. Did we say that it was going to be a, a versus pack of being? Uh, bone, uh, yeah, it's going to be. My theory was that it's this B with the non battle mask, because this one has the battle mask, and uh, barricade with uh, probably just the same, or maybe battle damage. Yeah, I mean, they've done other battle Dude. damage. Dude, stuff. if, if this comes damage. out, I'm really going to be freaked out after your whole reflector thing that you called with the crimson or whatever. Yeah, that's what I do. It, we're going Chris. in the same vein of Drift from last year because Drift came out as a special Entertainment Earth pack with the three baby Dinobots. So there's precedent for that kind of pack, and of course we had the the Bumblebee with the tapes, and the other Bumblebee with the tapes, and the Bumblebee with the add-on parts, and uh, Haley Steinfeld. So you know it kind of it comes yeah. out of in, it's not just out of random. It's, yeah, it's in form, and we got I'm guessing. I mean, we got parachute guy, like parachute that guy, parachute guy. I mean that's left field. I would have never said like, damn, you know what the shockwave needs is a parachute guy. He's the unsung hero. He's the hero we do not deserve. 
He's a hero. We, no, yeah, for, he's the deal. He's the hero we deserve. Not the one we needed, though. Frenzy's a rather glaring omission, especially this late in the line where they've done all the other seven characters. Yeah. Especially he had he had such a huge role in the first mm-hmm. movie. It's it's weird that they've chosen to omit him. There so you go. Well, well Toy, Toy Fair is coming up soon, so maybe maybe Fair we'll enough. find out. So here's a question that I would normally have asked by now, but the likelihood of me buying these figures is so low that I didn't ask it yet. How (laughs) torturous is the transformation on most of these? Because I own just a few of the Studio Series figures. I have that torturous um, Volkswagen Bumblebee mold, which is pain. Get rid of that. Um, Just get rid of that toy. (laughs) And then I have things like, you know, I have... This, which is not that painful to no. change. Like, it's a very normal, construct con style transformation. The, the funny part is I actually think that the bigger figures are the most simple in the line. Yes. A lot of the deluxes... I'm me, actually. Look, looking at my shelves right now, yeah, the VWB is a pain in the butt. Um, Shatter is kind of annoying because she is just the, her, her shape, and then uh, she's just so small and thin. Some pieces I got big hands, so some pieces are hard to move around. Uh, drop kick is kind of annoying, um, and lockdown is kind of annoying too. Lockdown's kind of annoying, but just mostly just panelly kind of annoying. Not anything. Yeah. Oh, barricade. Kind of Barric- well, yeah, barricade is always cursed. Barricade's a bit panelly. Yeah. Oh barricade yeah. Barricade is always cursed to have a like transformation. It. Yeah, with the legs, especially. Yeah, the legs are every single barricade toy has the same leg, same leg transformation. And they, they always suck. <laughs> it's always so annoying to transform. Um, but I've got Jetfire's I've got more involved. Here. He's a bit panelly, and that, that's mm-hmm. okay. Soundwave when they're, has when very they're panel-y, tight tolerances. Right. And, and when they're panelly, it's because they have to make the licensed vehicle mode. And I'm willing to go for that because it is licensed, and it looks exactly like the car. It's not an approximation. Yeah. It is yeah. a Mercedes. That's yeah. honestly been like, because like I do agree with you guys that Revenge of the Fallen was actually a really cool toy line. Like a lot of those toys are really neat. A lot of those toys are pretty hard to transform and kind of frustrating. Um, yes. And I yep. feel like a lot of the best movie figures that have really well represented impossible designs are actually really painful to transform. Like you yeah. know, I've owned that um, Revenge of the Fallen um, Leader Optimus That's Prime forever. Yeah, I hate and transforming that thing. It looks so neat, though. Like, it's a really good, big, cool figure. Yeah. Like, they, I, they I don't even mix. like movie designs, and I like it, but I don't want to ever really transform it again. Too, I think. What yeah. again? They did a, search is saying they did a good mix in Studio Series, because they do look like they're supposed to, but they're desi- the transformations yeah. have enough cheats in them, and enough they're, they're well yeah. enough designed that they're not tra- horrifying. Transformers hasn't, Transformers hasn't really found its footing until recently, I think the whole Combiner Wars to Power of the Primes era, it was just a mishmash of complexity. Some were as basic as five steps, other were complex to like 30 to 40 steps. And I think recent f- figures like Siege and Studio Series, it's finally hit that nice sweet spot of complexity, accuracy, and overall just, you know, step number of steps and stuff. So That's I think, a good point. Yeah, I think, I think the Transformers brand as a whole has really found its footing recently I'm trying to think of other is the uh, the new no. bumblebee the one that like transforms into that yellow jeep is that is that good should i get that it's not out yet it's not oh out yet. Okay. yeah well it's not out yet so um who knows i didn't like the world war ii one i'm assuming this one's also going to be very panelly like the world war ii one where like 90 percent of the car hangs off its back yeah that one was not a good mold it's not a good Better as hot rod because the tolerances are better and the paint is better. So, what about that new the the Camaro? Have you opened it up yet? The one that just came. It is in this box. Oh, mm. I was just curious how that was. Like, I don't know. Is it a like... new mold? Yes, it's a new mold, but they share engineering with other bees. There's so many Camaro bumblebees out there. I'm like, do I need another one? I don't know. Like, that's what it... I'm curious. I really this want to the ask one the question for. if that Camaro, if Camaro Bumblebee is the Transformer design that's got the most individual figures. 
I'm starting to think, yeah. Well, like, if you're just saying Camaro overall and you count older Camaros and newer Camaros and all that. Well, I'm staring at my shelf of bumblebees, and it's I don't have all of them on display, but I have a good bunch. I think it's, yeah, it depends on what you mean, because there's a lot of Camaros, but they're all different years the, and models. The fifth generation? Is that what yeah, I guess Camaro it's, is? Whatever. That one. I know what you're saying, Anna. I guess it's an argument, because I was oh. just thinking, like, like, a funny observation would be if there were more of that Camaro design than there were G1 Optimus Primes, but I bet there actually are. I bet there are too. I know that's stuff like you know, bumper battles and crazy, you know, fast action battlers and whatever craziness. Legends. Right? Legends. What yeah. a weird comparison. What a weird direction I pull us. Oh, hey, Rob, are we going to have Ouch My Wallet tomorrow night? I can't remember if he said he was or not. Never again. Well, I, yeah, I will about open this one I this got. week and post an update for the page. Okay, I just yeah. talked about all the stuff that I got, so. <laughs> There's my Ouch <laughs> yeah, My they, Wallet. Yeah, they, there you go. All the latest Studio Series wins. So, Christian can show off all of his shells for Bot Bots. And I guess you already, already did. did that twice. I guess you already did. You can do it like 30 times. That's actually our new our new show. It's going to be Christian Show Shells. <laughs> Christian Ikea Corner. Building have, you, a shelf. have you gotten any more uh, Bot Bots Wave 4? Shelves. Christian? A few. There you go. A few. I haven't seen any in the I wild. need 11 more to complete the series. Jeez. Yeah, I haven't seen any in the wild other than the new uh, the new uh, mystery packs. The like, yep. little vending yeah. machine ones. We did get word today that they are shipping from the shipping companies to the distribution center, so they should be in stores by the end of the month or so. Okay. The only ones that I want is the, the Hispanic food set. The I have completed ones. that set. I have an extra one from that set. Would you like it? Yeah. Oh, all right. Throw you, throw you some cash. Thanks. Cash room. Preach. Moolah. Dough. Cheddar. Etc. cetera. <laughs> So is that uh, Rob huh? said we are having ouch if people are going to be on. So I, uh, I actually have a couple new things. So I'll, uh, uh, I'll be on if you want. You gotta hold off until tomorrow. So tell us I now. Would, I would still seriously only have my Christmas stuff to talk about, but I haven't talked about it yet. So who knows? It's been a dry spell. It's been a real dry spell. I mean, for Chinese me, for sure. Is- Chinese New Year's is always a dry spell because it's we're in that weird funk of like I need to take January the opportunity and to recover. Yeah, January and February is always that weird funk of like I need to recover from the holidays. There's nothing coming out because of Chinese New Year, and it's just <laughs> and this year is going to be weird too because like I think the factories are closed longer due to the, yeah. the China Post is down until February 10th. Yeah, I think of the, the yeah. disease. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm and, curious if they're going to open up on, on time or not, because, I don't know, we haven't heard too yeah. much. I don't know, it seems like we haven't given as many updates lately, so. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. I mean, by all means, take your time, because I need to recover. Right, <laughs> right. right. <laughs> please, please take your time, because so. I, I know as soon as they open up, they're going to ship everything out, and we're going to get dogpiled with a bunch of stuff all coming out at once. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I so, prefer people surviving over toys. Yeah. yeah. There are a few yeah. things I'll put first yeah. over toys, but right. the yeah. survival of other humans, probably. Yeah. I mean, if I got if I got to wait another another month for a pre-order, oh well. You know, it's not the end of... Oh well, it's just a toy. <laughs> so. Yep. All right, well. And it's well, fun to watch, like, when we have a dry spell... What weird stuff Lucas will end up buying in order to make up for it? Oh man! Um, yeah, I I, I, ha- I have actually bought a few a few things recently here. So like off the Facebook groups and whatnot. So yeah, a few things you wouldn't normally actually buy. So it's interesting. Uh, and this dude, I don't know. Oh yeah, so. Uh, what what do you spell. think about about that? Like, I think he's re- like he looks really really cool, but I'm not sure. Like, I, I'm I'm kind of regretting getting him just because I'm like it's not a main 
character for me. Blitz Seeker? I, I was the, sorry, it was the uh, 3A uh, Blitzwing. Oh! Uh, he's right here, I think. I don't know if you can see him. So I'm pointing the camera at 3A Blitzwing for the audio guys. But thanks, but, cool. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I love the uh, deluxe line because here is the, I guess, premium line is what they call it. I don't know. But that's the, the last night Optimus from 3A. That thing is huge and like five hundred dollars. This dude was a hundred. Uh, Blitzwing was one hundred and eighty, uh, and about half the size. And the reason that I really like the new deluxe line they're doing is not only is it like you know less than half of what I paid for Optimus, uh, but the uh, skeleton of the figure is diecast, so he has a lot more heft to him. He also comes with a cool little stand. Um, he has a bunch of diecast pieces. He, you know, don't get me wrong. Optimus is still a fantastic figure. It still feels like a solid figure, but Optimus feels a lot more fragile. I wow. have, I, I, I really do not want to mess with him too much, especially with it being such a, such an expensive toy. The last thing I want to do is, you know, move it in the wrong area and bust it. And 3A actually includes instructions on how to move the like legs and stuff. Like it'll tell you like, Hey, you got to move this first. You got to move this and move this first before you move the leg or else you're going to snap it in half. So they're not meant to be messed with, but the new deluxe line for the Bumblebee movie is I have a lot more, uh, I'm a lot more at ease handling them because it's, it's half the cost and they just feel a lot sturdier to me. Yeah. Well, I feel like that they're just really cool fiddle figures. Like I like just posing. Like I spent, I don't know, like an hour the other day, just, you know, sitting in front of the TV, fiddling and, and moving Blitzwing into different poses and whatnot. So, and it's, you know, Christian doesn't like non transforming figures. He's made that open whenever we talk about stuff like that. Since I'm a movie guy, I'm more accuracy over transformation. So I don't mind having these big statues. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. They're pretty cool to me. If Lucas doesn't like that 3A Blood Suite too much, that might be the first 3A figure <laughs> Lucas is of selling me. <laughs> so, okay, no, no, no. I like it. What I'm saying is, is after having it, like, like I love that Bumblebee. The 3A Bumblebee is just, like, I really like that character. I like the movie and all that. It's just that the Blitzwing was in the movie for, like, whatever it was, five, ten minutes or something. And, and so that, that's really the only thing is, is that after messing with Bumblebee, messing with the Optimus Prime at, at TFCon, like it, like, I think that those are definitely the like two stars of the line. Whereas I feel like the Blitzwing is still a fantastic figure. Like the weathering on the figure is great. Like everything is just, is really, really well done. Um, it's just, it's just that the character, it's like, you know, it's Blitzwing. I yeah. really like that design, though. Like, the, the Bloodsween design, I actually think is really cool. Like, as a robot. I think he's like, going to be one of those figures, like Lucas said. Like, at first, no one is going to really buy it, because it's a side character. But then once he sells out, he's going to go up. People want to... Because some of those... Studio Series one. Some of those Bumblebee designs, I, I like. And then some of them... Like, you know, that that sound wave is going to come out. And I get why people really like it, but I don't like the design. So I, I don't really yeah. want it that much. No. I, got I that like the crazy. idea of it. I, I am I just... I am going to be so excited when they announce the new movie and it's going to be G1 mashed with Bay designs together to where they actually look realistic. Because I just... I don't know. I, I dig that, like... That's where I think that it looks it looks fantastic. And especially like if you're talking about a high end collector grade line, like that looks the best. Like G one masterpiece, like it looks cool and whatever, but like those three A figures is just it's just another level. It's just different. Three th yeah, I mean I'm not gonna knock on Masterpiece. Masterpiece is great when it's doing is great, but three A the three A guys, that's our hot toys. That's our right. Sideshow collectibles. These are, I think you know, so. right. I think once I bought that Optimus Prime, that was, I think, when I took the official step of 
going from one level of a collector to the next level of collector. Like, you know, I I got a five hundred dollar statue sitting in my basement. That was the next yeah. level for me, uh, and it's fantastic. I mean, it's not for everybody. I understand. Uh, but, but you know, the thing me, that's crazy—the that's best that I'm gonna get. The thing that's crazy to me, and I don't know how three A does it, because. I look at those, and, you know, we went into that store with the statues, Anna, where there was, like, the six-scale yeah. statues. And I feel like that those 3As can, like, go right next to all those statues. But they're cheaper. Like, you know, because a lot of those statues are all 250 or 400 or whatever, you know. And, it's, I mean, not that yeah. 180 is nothing to sneeze at. I, like, it is a lot of money. But in in comparison to, like, Flames Toys... Uh, Transformers or the the hot toys and things like that or sideshow, like it's it's all with production. I know a lot I... of the statues, like the Marvel statues, even like the big you know Prime Studios Transformers statues. Those big statues, like ninety nine percent of them, I'm pretty sure are all hand sculpted. Like there's somebody yeah. sculpting them by hand. Sideshow has posted. Vid- multiple videos on their social media. You should follow Sideshow on their social media. The social media is great. A, a lot of toy porn. But a lot of times they'll show their in-house sculptors working on sculptures. And it's like, you know, you're watching art being made. So, you know, they got to compensate them for the time. And then just the way that they make them is a lot different from the way we're used to Transformers. You know, you make the CAD files on a computer. Right. You print it out, see if it works. And then you make it using injection plastic. It's a lot different from you know, molding this, you know, making a statue and then replicating that statue. And a lot of times those statues are under 500 pieces, maybe even under 200 pieces. So, and I, honest to goodness, don't think you should underestimate, even with the like more, you know, standard doll type bodies that some of them have, how difficult it is to get those human likenesses as darn good as they are. You know, those faces on those things are creepy, like oh, yeah. how good I'm- they look. I'm and we don't. A lot of our, yeah, it's way easier to make a robot face look accurate yeah. than it is to make a human face with all of our pores and imperfections and blemishes and whatnot. Yeah, I'm I'm friends with a lot of artists, and it's a running joke that nobody knows how to draw hands. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like, for these people to make just an amazing sculpture, it just blows my mind. Like, I, I can't even write my name without it being illegible. You know, to these guys, you know, I already think, you know, drawing is one thing, but actually making a 3D sculpture of this is just yeah, mind-blowing how they do it. No, like, I'm, not actually, I'm, not... I'm not actually good at either, but I actually think it's easier to make a hand out of clay than it is to draw one. Like, I think I get closer sculpting a hand than I do drawing one. Yeah, I definitely understand where you're coming from, Lucas, though. it is, It, it is like, you know... Especially with the deluxe stuff. I mean, it, the fact that this blitzing was under two hundred bucks was it was insane to me too. You know, it's a nice, a heavy figure. The 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 paint on it is insane. It looks like it just walked off of the screen. Yeah, it looks yeah. like if you watch the movie and you, you grab it and it comes right off of the screen. And and that the fact that it's under two hundred bucks is cheaper than some masterpieces. Is yeah, insane. No, absolutely. But, you know, yeah, especially with in this day and age with rising prices and everything so all right well i think we've probably gotten off topic <laughs> enough here um so is is there anything we want to add before we go since we've been going over an hour here no i'm all done go buy devastator yeah go get yeah. The, my computer's dying so i'm waving yeah i mean yeah do if you're gonna do devastator do it now before it's too late it's already kind of too late i mean the last few releases are you know scavenger I don't know if Scavenger's going to get restocked again because almost if you go, if you look it up on Google, 99% of the stores are sold out or pre-orders. They're sold out. Amazon, Amazon weirdly has it's up for $75 a pre-order. Like Amazon themselves, not a third party. Amazon themselves has it for 75 bucks. It's a crazy if you want to pre-order it. It's weird. It's yeah. And like I said, scrap metal is a $40 figure. Um, long haul is a sixty dollar figure. Mixmaster's creeping up there. So, if if you're gonna, especially now, I think what happened was a lot of people didn't get them until now. Like, you know, oh, scrap metal's eight bucks. High towers ten bucks. Now I should go back and get all of them. And now they're jacking up because everyone wants them. So if you're gonna buy them, 
do it now before before people are going to start selling the whole set for like 600 bucks because i think it it wouldn't be it would not be too far-fetched to me if we'll see a 400 dollar yeah if it'll be 400 bucks all right well uh, on that note my computer is gonna die here so i think we gotta go yeah mine too (laughs) all right so uh thank you thank you sergio for uh joining us this week uh, it was fun. It was fun to talk studio series since we never yeah, do. So. I love talking movies. Nobody else does, but <laughs> <laughs> I love talking movies. So, all right. Well, night, everyone. Bye.